So today I'm gonna to be going out and shooting the Shinon CE5 1980s SLR film camera. On there I've got a 50 millimeter 1.7 lens. That's gonna go inside me fanny pack. I've also got a Vivitar 28 mil lens, nice and cheap lens there. That one is also gonna go in me fanny pack. And I've got my GoPro for vlogging, that's going in my fanny pack. And I've also got some FP4 and some Ortho 80 as well, both very good Ilford films. That's going in my bum bag. And I've got a cable release as well, I'll show you why. And I've got this little gizmo that I'm going to attach the GoPro to my camera so you guys can see my point of view. That's going to go in my waist bag as well. So that's my bum bag all packed for me shoot. <laughs> Why don't they call them a fanny pack or a bum bag? It goes around your waist. It should be called a, a waist bag or something, you know? You're not exactly good to say that I'm going to be putting a roll of FP4 in my fanny or a Canon AE1 in my bum. It needs to be changed. It's wrong. It's a wrong word. <laughs> So today I'm at another car show. This one is in Ride on the Isle of Wight. There's loads of cars here. There's American cars, British cars. I've even seen a couple of American police cars over there. I don't know how these people <laughs> can get these cars over, but it uh, must cost a fortune. But today I've come with a little bit of a difference. I am not so interested in the cars. I'm more gonna be interested in the people that are looking at the cars, you know, the enthusiasts. And I've bought with me the Shinon CE5 camera this cost me 50 quid uh, a few years back you might remember on the video and uh, also I've got a tripod because I'm not really over fussed with you know whenever I go out and take pictures I like to see something that I can print and maybe put on the wall at home and just random people not really going to float my boat so I've bought a tripod so I want to just slow some of my shots down so that I can just concentrate on the car and the people that are looking at the cars and walking around will be in motion you know, just something different, uh, something new to try out, I suppose. And uh, it gets on, the thing I love about coming to places like this, if you're kind of nervous in any way about taking pictures of people in the streets or whatever, something like this can really build your confidence up. If you're not too confident with shooting people, and I know some people aren't because um, I see it in the comments, some people say that they're, uh, shy when it comes to you know shooting people taking photographs of random people on the streets but it just takes a little bit of um, time to get used to and events like this can really bring you out of your shell Mate, just sit down a sec, I was just getting you in the background. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's all right. Dad, no worries, no worries. Just to get this shot. Of. <laughs> Got it, cheers. I'll show you what I mean. I'll take the first shot on the camera, uh, see what we get. I'll put the um, GoPro on top of the camera so you can see my point of view. So that was the first shot there on that red car. Just had to wait for a few people to move out of the way. And then um, just took me shot one eighth of a second F22 with that orange filter on. Awesome. So with this shot, people are quite courteous. They could see a camera there on a tripod. I've got a GoPro on top of the camera. Um, if I take this shot, if I stand on the camera and look through it, people are going to walk behind me. So I want people to walk in front of me. So I'm just going to be discreet. Pretend that I'm not actually taking a photograph. Just look at me, watch or something. But I've got the cable release in the hand and I'll hit the button at the right moment when people are walking in front of the camera. The trouble is I've got a 50mm lens on there so it's not giving me much room for manoeuvre, everyone's coming up quite close. So uh, I'm going to change over to the 28mm lens, Let's see how that works. So 
So at the moment I'm hitting one thirtieth of a second uh, and I've come to this spot here, people are walking a little bit faster. Over there where I was people were a lot slower just dawdling but here it's like a passing point. So that's pretty much uh, what I'm up to, so um, I'm going to mill around with this 28mm, the 28mm was working much better than the 50 I don't know why I put the 50 on to be honest with you, um, but the 28mm was working much better. So I'm going to mill around and take a few of the same shots, it's going to take me quite a while because I have to keep waiting for the right composition for the right people to walk past. I'll show you some of the pictures that I'm going to take, I'm only going to do half the roll and then um, we'll change it around, go handheld and do other things. Terry, tell us about this car, what is it, where did you get it from? Okay, so this car is the 2011 Ford Crown Victoria and it was actually one of the very last off the production line which was uh, October 2011. Okay. Uh, and this car came from Gordon County Sheriff Department which is in Georgia which is uh, just a bit further out from Jacksonville in Florida. Came out of service a year ago, uh, it's got 212,000 miles on the clock although it feels like it's just come out of the factory. Um, and it's a full, full on swap come general purpose car. So, uh, the uh, deputy who had this car, this was his take home car, uh, he's part of the swap team. And if uh, he got a call to go and uh, do a swap bit, he would respond from home. So, it's a 4.6 V8 petrol engine. And it does about, the British, about 13 miles to the gallon, roughly. And how do you find these sort of cars? You're obviously looking for one of these cars and thought. Yeah. Uh, I come from a law enforcement background, so uh, both here in the UK and, and out in the States, so I was privileged to be out there for, for a period of time. Um, uh, this car came up for sale, the department were disposing of it, so uh, that's where the story began, the process of getting it back to the UK. The department very kindly, very much left most of the equipment as it was. So as you see it now, pretty much is how it came out of service. And this uniform you're wearing, is that? It is a Gordon County uniform as well, yeah. They've been very good, they've helped me out with some bits and pieces, so yeah. yeah. Dean, tell us about the car. The car's a 2014, uh, it was a Massachusetts State Trooper. It was based up near Boston from 2014 to 2019. Uh, it was then retired, it was then basically sent over to the movie business and it's done the commuter and it's done the uh, the rookie yeah. and once they finished it was about 18 months doing that after that it goes back to the production company and they then sell them off and I bought it and I've had it two years. Is it difficult to get these sort of cars over to the UK? No. If you've got a serving officer with a live badge in the in the US they can buy any piece of police equipment at all and ship it to the UK no problem. Complete which is how this was it's always been. So it came with all the lights, the sirens, everything's all fully kitted. So everything in there is exactly what would be used back everything in? Everything was, yeah. Even the computer system, the whole nine yards. Everything's actually as was. It's got a 5.7 Hemi engine, so 0 to 60 is pretty quick. So I say four, four and a half. And then you've got 150, 160 top end. So it runs an eco drive system, so you can drive along on four cylinders, um, 25 to the gallon. And if you touch the accelerator, the other four cylinders come on, and it's not 25 to get out. Obviously, it's legal to drive over here, but you've got the, you have to take the lights off and stuff. I've got a, a cut out switch in the boot, so it just turns all the lights and sirens off. So you've actually got to stop, open the boot, connect it, turn it on to actually operate the lights and sirens, and that keeps me legal. So you don't have to take the lights off nope. yourself? You've got no blue or red visible uh, lights on there at all, it's all clear, so therefore, it keeps you legal. I'm just waiting for a car to go by, I've got you in the frame, stay there. <laughs> Thank you. 
I found Catherine again, look. Look at the camera she's got. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine's got one of these with her today, a Fujifilm Instax 100 camera. How old is this, Wide. Catherine? Wide. It's, it's an older version. Older version. Let's take a picture of a car, see how it looks. Oh, it's coming out the top of it in the cab. That's it there, is it? I'll hide it from the sun. Put it in I'll, pocket. I'll say, where do I put it? In my pocket? Yeah, put it in my pocket. I'll put it in my pocket. <gasps> Catherine's taking one of me. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. <laughs> Not shake it. So this is the first time that I've gone to a car show and taken photos with people in mind. I was hoping to get more slow shutter speeds and movement, but really I needed a good ND filter to get those slower speeds out of the camera. Also with the orange filter, although I've got good skies, the orange and red cars were coming out a lot lighter, something I didn't think of at the time. I decided to ditch the tripod and video camera and switch to the ortho film. Now with orthochromatic film not being particularly sensitive to reds and oranges, I knew that those colours would be darker. So I was looking forward to seeing those results, still keeping people and cars in mind. But without the tripod, I was more free for angles and compositions. I was also aware of suntanned faces. They would be darker too. So that was quite a good shoot at the car show. Usually I go to car shows and I'm concentrating on lines and angles and stuff and details of the car, but this time I decided to throw people into the shot. And I think it made it a lot more enjoyable for me. And also it made it a lot, it, the pictures when I look at them look a lot more real. Um, this is the uh, Shinon CE5 camera that I was using. Like I said, I got this for 50 quid. So these are brilliant cameras. This one is actually fully working as well. So I was shooting all those pictures on Aperture Priority and getting the shots that I needed. And also this little tiny uh, 28 mil Vivitar lens. I think it was much better when I started shooting that and getting really close on some of these cars and getting this wide angle look with people in the background. I thought it worked really well. I then went in the dark room and made uh, some prints as well. This time you'll notice that I've put the, I've left the rebate of the film in, which I did under the enlarger. Um, I won't go into that, but uh, I left the re rebate the film on one side. So these are some of the prints that I liked or some of the photographs that I liked that I made uh, 10 by 8 prints of. This one there was that big American car, nice wide space. This one there, the BMW, there's just two people sitting on the wall and the angle that I got looking down inside the BMW convertible, I think it's a three series, and that two people there sitting on the wall. I like that print. And also this uh, elderly lady, she's <laughs> sitting there staring at this sports car. Maybe she had that in the day. Um, but it makes you wonder when you look at a photograph like that, what is going through her mind looking at that sports car, bless her. She must be in her 80s, but she was obviously enjoying the show. And uh, that's one of the wide ones I was talking about there where I got real close to that. I don't know what car, I don't know what car that is, some big American truck looking thing. And the guy walking past with his top off, I just thought that made an interesting shot. And a couple more, the Citroen, nice wide angle there on the Citroen, people sitting on the wall enjoying themselves. I like the, um, the chromey effect on that car when that came out, that one looked really nice. And also this one here, getting close up to that no parking sign uh, with the people there and that car, a couple of American cars there, uh, you can see in the background, but making that really... Uh, pronounced in the foreground that sign no parking of course people are parked there and that polaroid camera as well the Insta instax polaroid camera that yeah. Catherine let me have a go at <laughs> there's the three um, polaroid snaps that i've got to keep as well that was quite good fun i must admit i met a guy shooting polaroids the other week at a car show 
and um, I've never really thought about shooting Polaroids before, but I can imagine shooting Polaroid is quite good fun uh, to get into. And with street photography, it doesn't really float my boat when people are in just wandering around, just do it, just boring to me, you know, people smoking fags or just looking miserable and gloomy, especially in the UK when you're on the streets, unless something really cool is happening. It doesn't really float my boat, but this I actually quite enjoyed getting people in the shot. And like I said at the start, if you're if you're one of those people that are a little bit nervous about shooting people on the streets or shooting people in general, go to one of those shows and build your confidence up. Um, nobody really minds you having a picture take that their picture taken. You can always politely ask them, compliment them if you like on their hat or their clothes or their jacket or whatever. Hey mate, that's a nice jacket. Do you mind? Bang, taking the shot, walk on um for whatever reason but at those sort of events and shows you're there to take photographs of the cars if people are, are around them cars then so be it um no one really batters an eyelid like i said so i quite enjoyed that shoot and i think they're great places to to visit if you want to get into shooting people get more confident with shooting uh, people maybe on the streets at events or wherever festivals but uh, anyway guys hope you enjoyed that video i hope it's given some of those guys that said to me in the comments they're a little bit shy about shooting uh, people around and about town or what have you. Uh, just try one of those sort of events. You could soon build your confidence up and get to see what you like and what you don't like. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time. It's originally a Massachusetts State Trooper. Uh, we're based up near Boston. Can I start you again then? Moped, sorry. <laughs> Noisy bloody things. What's your name? My name's Dean. Dean? Yeah. Dean, tell us about the car. The car's a 2014 